Hey everyone, Grant Alexander here. Another lathe video for you this week. In today's video, we're making a little rattle. Stay tuned and I hope you enjoy. I started off by hammering in the drive spur into one side of my blank. For this project, I've chosen cherry and it's about two inches by two inches square. I mount the drive spur in my four jaw chuck and the other end is mounted in a live center and locked in place. I adjust the tool rest to be parallel with the blank and I ensure that it doesn't touch any of the corners. I am using a gouge to roughly turn the blank round. With this size of blank, I'm able to make two rattles without having to remount the wood. After it's roughly round, I use my carbide rougher to put a small dovetail in the end. This will allow me to mount it in the four jaw chuck directly. I do this because the chuck holds the blank much more securely than the drive spur and it will allow me to reach the end in the final sanding stage. Before I do any shaping, I remove some of the material at the end. If you don't do this, you'll end up with a small hole at the top of your rattle. I'm using my skew chisel to round over the end. I started making these rattles as practice for using my skew chisel as they involve beading, V-cuts, tapers, and you can even practice coves in the areas you'll eventually remove. Using the skew can be a bit daunting, but I found if you just take small bits at a time, it's much more manageable. In the description, I will link to a video I found helpful in learning how to use my skew. To complete this rounded end, I first have to make clearance for my tool. I do this by removing material with the tip of my chisel to create a V. I then turn the tool over and use the heel to complete the round over. I measure down the shaft using my skew as a guide and then remove more material using the tip of my chisel, again creating a V. I use the carbide rougher to remove the bulk of the material around the shaft. I leave a section in the middle that will eventually become the ring. To shape the top of the ring, I'm using my skew chisel and rounding over the edges. I now switch to the carbide diamond detailer. This will allow me to shape the underside of the ring. At this point, I don't want to go all the way through as after the ring is detached, I won't be able to easily sand it. I go through all the grits up to 240 and try and get on the inside edge of the ring. At this point I detach the ring, but with further reflection I would do this step after shaping the rest of the handle as the ring may hit against the tool rest. I use my carbide rougher to make the shaft the final diameter. In order to sand the inside edge of the ring, I used double sided tape on some sandpaper and attached it to the shaft. Make sure to turn down the RPMs on the lathe for this part. Now to shape the handle. I added a couple of different angled tapers. I used my parting tool to define the end of the rattle and then back to the skew for a final round over. Now the least fun part, sanding. I part off the end using my skew and then I can sand the end as well. I use a pull saw to remove the rattle from the rest of the stock. I sand the end flat on my belt sander and off camera I also sanded the end by hand. Finally, I add finish. I chose some beeswax and mineral oil mix that I get locally. A food safe finish is recommended in case the little ones decide to put the rattle in their mouth.
I hope you enjoyed that video where I made this rattle. If you did, I'd appreciate it if you give it a thumbs up. If you're new here, please consider subscribing. These rattles are a lot of fun to make. I've made a whole bunch of them since I got the lathe. Um, they've been a lot of fun to uh, try out different techniques with the skew chisel like I showed in the video, as well as try out my carbide tools that I got for Christmas. Until next time, cheers and have a great day.